But yes, these are basically the reasons as to why you should not use mid-side for everything. You should not use mid-side as a default, especially in mastery. In this, I feel very much needed video, we are gonna talk about one of the most misunderstood subjects in the music production and mixing world, mid-side processing and why you should not use it every time or as a default. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Miss Best TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, free plugins, special discounts and offers. And of course, if you wanna support the channel, but most important, if you really wanna learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a Mix Best TV member and access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses on many different genres, start to finish, mastering courses, special videos and a lot more. Also, let me know in the comments down below, how do I look with the shirt? Let's get to it. All right, like I said in the intro, I feel this video is very much needed because now more than ever, you see people throwing mid-side processing and specifically mid-side EQ on everything and the practice of using mid-side EQ as a default, especially for mastering, thrown out there all the time. And yes, I'm also referring to the stupid IG charts with the EQ master presets and stuff like that. And I wanted to do this video first because yes, I am going to do another purge and take some of those IG charts and advices and kind of analyze them. Let's put it this way. May God be with you all. Those will be funny videos, but I wanted to take the chance to do something constructive as opposed to just criticize a bad advice without trying to give a good advice. And this is what I'm going to do today. So first of all, before understanding why mid-side shouldn't be a go-to or something that you slap on the master just because, we need to understand what mid-side really is. The take-home message, the short version is this one. Mid-side processing will not give you a perfect separation between the center, the mono channel, and the sides. There will always be an overlap between these two. And if you don't understand how this works, you can't train your ears to pay attention and hear the artifacts and the problems that mid-side processing causes. This is the short version. Now let's analyze how and why. So with mid-side processing, we want to separately treat the mid-channel, the mono-channel, from the sides, from the stereo portion of the signal, right? But we know that a more technical term for mid-side is sum and difference. The mid-channel is the sum of the left and the right what's present equally in both channels, right? That's our mono channel or center. The size or difference is also a mono channel. It comprises all the information present on the left channel minus the right channel. There will be more to say about mid-side encoding, but for the purpose of this video, we'll stop here. When we encode a stereo mix into mid-side, any audio that is present in the far left corner of your mix will be found both in mid and side channel. How could this be? Let's take a look. The left channel would have some amplitude, let's say X, and the right channel would have none, so zero, because we're talking about audio panned hard left. Using this formula, we can see that mid equal left plus right equal X plus zero equal X. Side equals left minus R equal X minus zero equal X. So audio on the far left appears identically in the both mid and side signals. What if we are dealing with audio panned hard right? In this case, mid equals L plus plus R equals zero plus Y equals Y. The side equals left minus R equals zero minus Y equals minus Y. So audio on the far right will be found with the same amplitude in mid and side signal, but the one in the side signal will be phase flipped. This means that even elements and instruments that are hard panned left and right will be affected both when we process the mid and when we process the sides. Let's make a common example. You have a track where you have guitars panned left and right. Now you grab a dynamic EQ to tame the harshness of the vocals in the mid channel, all right? With that move, you could affect those guitars panned hard left right. It could mess with the instrument clarity and most important, it could create a weird spatially distorted effect on both. Same example, but with mid-side compression. Let's say you have a rock mix with the guitar panned onto the right. You want to compress the mid-channel more than the sides, okay? Very common. You could, emphasis on could, 
end up with that guitar rising and following in level at odd intervals that could destroy the balance of the mix and the groove. A better use of midside compression could be on single tracks or groups or for example specific genres like EDM sidechaining one thing to another as a last resort if you have a mix that is so problematic that you don't have any other tools and you can only solve the problem with midside compression. But even worse is midside EQ. That's the one you see thrown out there all the time. Why? Because equalization by nature works by shifting the phase. That's how they do their job. And mid-side EQ could really smear and disrupt the transient relationship that you worked, hopefully, so hard to achieve in your mix. Believe it or not, panning is not the only way to make your mix feel and sound wide. How you handle transients, especially in the mid-range, is just as important. And a smeared transient, especially in the mid-range where human beings are so sensitive, can create this sense of not punchy enough or not in your face enough. Yeah, sure, when you put mid-side EQ and you boost the sides like every other charts on IG tell you to do, everything sounds more exciting because it's wider and our brain gets tricked, just like the top end boost. Everything sounds better when you boost the top end for the first five seconds and then it causes uh, ear fatigue and you compare it to other mixes and yours is harsh. Same with mid-side EQ or boosting too much the sides. Your mix sounds exciting and wide at first, but then when you compare to others, you miss the mono channel, you don't have punch. Again, the smear transient. You don't have that energy and that focus in the mid channel anymore. And this is bad with stereo wideners that just simply turn up the volume of the sides, but it's even worse with mid side equalization because on top of overcooking with too much side information, you also disrupt the phase relationship, the transient relationship. And like I said, you need to train your ears to hear those things because there's so many people out there throwing mid-side EQ and boost the top end or boost the mid-range and they feel like it sounds better. But that's a rookie mistake, that's an amateur mistake. Not to say to never use mid-side EQ here or mid-side compression, not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you need to know the potential problems and artifacts that mid-side EQ and mid-side compression can cause and then train your ears to recognize those artifacts so you know when to apply it, when it's okay, when it's not, and how much you can push it. This is why I face pal myself when I see IG charts saying, oh, cut everything under 160 hertz on the sides. And yes, this is a real example. I will talk about it in another video. I go like, what the hell? But another thing to consider, even when you use mid-side EQ or mid-side enhancement on single tracks, let's say for example, you have a piano. If you push the sides too much, yes, there is the first excitement of hearing the piano uh, wider, but also keep in mind if the song will ever be played in mono and the piano is a main element, that piano might be too low and the transient smearing caused by the mid-side EQ, it will still be there. So you have a lower piano, maybe the balance of the mix is not there anymore, and you smear the transient. And let me touch about mono compatibility. Like I said before, you can't have a 100% mono compatible mix because that would mean a mono mix. But some things are fine to be lost in stereo, like ear candies and some stereo effects, but not the main elements, okay? Like kick, snare, vocals, a piano on a song, something like that. And you can use mid-side EQ, just you need to know how much is too much. But yes, these are basically the reasons as to why you should not use mid-side for everything. You should not use mid-side as a default, especially in mastering. If you wanna know more, I will link a couple of good articles in the info box down below. But let me know in the comments down below if this video helped you. Did you already know all these things or you were using mid-side processing just because so many people talked about it and so many plugins have the option. I blame that one too. All the companies right now throw the mid-side option in their EQs or compressors, which is amazing, but just because you can doesn't mean that you should. And if you like the video, please don't forget to leave a like and share. Check the info box down below for all the links. Click the join button, become a Mix Plus TV member if you really wanna step up your mix and mastering game. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.